But of course, the big story today, current Deputy Governor of the RBA, Michelle Bullock, has been appointed to the top job of Governor as the government ends Phil Lowe's tenure. She'll be the first female Governor at the RBA in history and will take on the role on September 18. So let's get some more analysis now with independent economist and Chief Economic Advisor at Judo Bank, Warren Hogan, who joins me live. Warren, pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. And you've been quite vocal, obviously, about Phil Lowe on this program in the past and perhaps some of his mistakes. No surprise he's been ousted before the end of his term. I think this was largely expected by the market. But what's your take on the incoming governor? Yeah, hi Ingrid, thanks for having me on the show. I think it's an excellent decision by the government. The Treasurer is gone for continuity, experience um, and, a, and an open mind, I think, to the, to the recommendations of the review. I think they didn't want to take the risk of going with an outsider, um, real or perceived. And so I think this is a very, very good decision for not just the RBA, because uh, it represents continuity, but it's good for, good for the Australian community because Michelle Bullock is a very sensible person. She will be a very good RBA governor. Yeah, I guess the question here, though, Warren, is the call's been for change at the RBA. Does bringing in a so-called, you know, lifer at the RBA, someone who's been there for 40 years, have the capacity for change? I mean, you know, she's obviously known to be incredibly smart. Her last speech was very impressive. Obviously, she knows the place inside out. But will she be able to bring that change that's been called in for in the review? Yeah, look, I think she will for two reasons. One is um, the review has been very detailed, so it's going to be a very clear idea of what the government uh, and what others think is best practice, um, and she'll be using that as a guide, obviously. But the other one is is that when the, the errors that the RBA leadership made uh, in the last few years, she was sort of a senior observer. She wasn't sort of one of in, in one of the key roles of governor, deputy governor, or head of economics. Hmm. So I think she saw where the mistakes were. And of course, we should never forget that prior to the pandemic, the RBA was not only one of the finest public sector institutions in this country, but one of the hmm. finest central in the world. And she has seen how that's played out. So I think she's very well placed to, to look at where the mistakes were made, what drove hmm. them, uh, and, uh, and, and make sure they don't happen again. I don't envy her, though. She's got a pretty tough job ahead of her. Obviously, you know, Lowe had to hike rates. We know that because of inflation. But now we're sort of at this vulnerable turning point in the economy. It's going to be a pretty delicate balance, right, to, to get this right over the next six to 12 months? It is. This is where central bankers earn their money. No economic model will tell them what to do month in, month out. They're feeling around in the dark right now mm. for what the right level of interest rates is to to make sure we get this inflation down in a timely manner. So, look, she's she's been sitting at the table now for 12 months uh, as Deputy Governor. She knows all of the ins and outs of the, the issues. And uh, I think this is our best chance of navigating the next 12 months uh, without, A, undercooking the rate hikes and letting the economy get away, or B, overcooking the rate hikes and causing unnecessary disruption. So that's a very important element of this decision. So what's your view then? I mean, what does the rates trajectory look like? You know, we know market consensus is for, I think, another hike or two. I know ANZ came out today saying they think now potentially on hold, given some of the softer data we're starting to see. But what's your take? Yeah, it's very tricky right now, as it always is at the top of the cycle. But the one thing that's really become apparent to me is that it's either we've got one or two left, which mm. is my long-standing view and where the market has come to in the last few months, or we're going to have to go up to the level of where the US and, and other central banks are, i.e. five and a half percent. And that's a real sh that'll be a real shock to this economy and will probably induce recession. And I, I, I think that 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 scenario is is in play. Um, we just got to watch and see how the economy pans out in the next few months. It needs to start responding to these rate hikes in terms of housing and consumer spending in a more concerted fashion, or we look like we may have to go above five. But, but just quickly, Warren, I mean, we know uh, we know monetary policy is blunt. It's limited. There's parts of the population that are getting smashed right now. There's other parts that interest rates have literally zero impact on. How much is the government doing? Is the government doing enough from a fiscal perspective? Look, I think if the, if the economy starts to slow quite concertedly from here on in and we see a peak in the cash rate around 4.35 uh, or where we are today then I think the government's strategy to be very careful um, with fiscal policy not tighten up 
and, of course, to try and promote wages growth, won't be viewed that negatively. But, of course, if the economy is really proving to be resilient and rates have to go above five, I think that's when it's going to realise the government has mm. underestimated this and should have done more. Warren Hogan, always a pleasure to talk. Thanks so much for joining us on this big day.